Hi there guys, this is Cassandra. I'm a Riffle in Time and I'm so glad you're here. Today we're doing a really cozy journal with me. I am going to be doing this I think once a month where we just get together and journal. Today we are using the Energy Archaeology Oracle which already has some good bones to it of like journaling practice. It has some prompts. Uh, no pun intended on the bones here, <laughs> but the the real thing we're going to be doing is we'll read, we'll pull a card, read the guidebook, and just kind of flush out those questions and what our answers look like. So all you need is yourself and something to either write in or type on, and I'll bring the rest. I will keep doing this with different decks. And in different ways, we'll probably start doing some different types and maybe we'll even do some kind of like junk journaling. I'll have you like bring some supplies or something and we'll do it all together. So that will be some fun things that looking for that we will do, but we're going to start by pulling a card and I am thinking that Today, our question is really going to focus on what can we reflect on to maybe either move some energy on our body or to kind of focus our energy. So where are we stuck? Where do we need to be moving towards? And maybe that will be listening. I am going to get the guidebook here and I am going to show you this is a full two pager here we have over here we have the properties and anatomy I'm going to be reading the energy the wisdom and then we're gonna work through those journal prompts at the bottom so I will let you take a peek at the card while I read to you the energy and wisdom energy what you hear in the physical sense is the range of frequencies that are made audible through the brain what you listen to in the energetic sense are the frequencies vibrations patterns programs and resonances that fall outside of that small range energetically listening has nothing to do with the physical act of hearing the inner ear bones turn your attention to wisdom that falls outside of the external and internalized cacophony of life asking you to open to allow to trust yourself to hear things as they are in their true state not through the lens of what you want to hear or desire them to be wisdom you can hear and make it into something else or you can listen and understand its perfection this is the wisdom of the inner ear however it doesn't always feel that easy in fact, it usually never is. The energy of the inner ear brings to you all the frequency it receives and lays it to rest on the grounded shore of expectation. Over time, the inner ear will attune to what you expect to hear. The patterns and programs of early childhood, messages from society and culture, reinforced beliefs of systems and institutions, voices that layer, one upon the other and make up the inner soundtrack of your life. Voices that are not always kind or true or helpful. Voices that may have kept you small instead of nurturing you into the most expanded version of yourself. To reclaim the wisdom and guidance of the inner ear, tap into your core energetic resonance and listen to your truth. It may come as a whisper at first to see if you really will disregard the other voices vying for your attention. You'll know it when you hear it. It will feel like a tide of renewed energy and will shake the bedrock of expectation. <sighs> I love Ashley. <laughs> Alrighty, and then we have four journal prompts that we're going to look at. One, what messages do I repeat over and over in my head? So I am going to write down that question with you. So again, what messages do I repeat 
over and over in my head. I think this can be good or bad thing, so take a minute with me and I want the purest response from you as possible without my words, but I will reflect with you of like what I chose. So what messages do I repeat over and over in my head? So some of the things I thought of, and I wanted to try to think of both sides of the coin because I think that we can repeat negative messages over and over and then we can repeat positive things. So I try to balance some of my negatives. And one of the things I really have struggled with and I work on constantly is the productivity and usefulness equaling self-worth. So I really struggle with resting or doing tasks that I don't deem as productive or useful and allowing myself to just exist without it working towards something. I have always really struggled with that and if I have a down moment I am thinking of what is the next thing that I can be doing that is contributing so and something something I'm really bad at as well is if I'm doing some one of those things can I add a second thing to like double <laughs> productivity on it if you ask me to go somewhere or do something how can I be useful to you in that so something my friend they wanted me to come with them to get their their partner a present for Christmas and I remember apologizing because I didn't, I couldn't help them find what they were looking for. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not being useful right now. And they're like, I don't need you to be useful. I just want your company. <laughs> and I was like, wait, do people just want to see me or be with me? And they don't want me to like offer them something always. So that was a moment, but I really tried to work on that internalized message that my self-worth is related directly to how useful I can be to someone. Another thing I do though that is a positive is there's this Kurt Vonnegut quote and I can't remember exactly how it goes but it's if you're happy to exclaim or murmur at some point if this isn't nice I don't know what is is like to in that moment to recognize that like I am happy in this moment and I do that very frequently. I will just be like on a walk or sitting with my son laughing about something silly and I just like, I really try to say it aloud for him and for others around me. It's like, I just say like, I'm happy. Like this is like, this is just bringing me a lot of joy or I will literally say, if this, <laughs> this isn't nice, I don't know what is. Like I will literally say that all the time. So that is a good thing that I repeat in my head. Um, I also have a really hard time with perception and being perceived, I guess more uh, directly, it's being perceived. I'm always really concerned with 
is does this sound stupid do i look like you know what i mean you you know what i mean i have like the imposter syndrome that probably we are all plagued with but even i like have trouble being in public places even like with my friends or with someone else and it's like I have to be quiet and calm and cool and collected and I can't you know do anything that seems like I don't know. but I do really have like this inner loop of always like what do I'm like looking at myself from the outside another thing I struggle with is tied to that productivity and usefulness is feeling like I'm wasting my time if like something feels like a waste of time to me that is that's like one of the harder things for me to work through when I'm feeling like if I'm feeling frustrated or angry at all it's usually nine times out of ten because I feel like I've wasted my time it's like something has taken time from me which I think is the most valuable thing in the world is time and I've seen how little time we can have and how quickly something can change or we can lose somebody and i think that's made me really back to the if this isn't nice i don't know what it is it takes me back to like i want to be here doing something of value i want to be using this time as much as i can as like for the greater good so usually like when i'm being productive it's in a good sense of like i'm trying to be productive to move forward towards my goals to like and it's not always like just work but like with my son like i want to be like going on a walk i want to be actively playing with him we don't have a lot of time where like i just want to be like sitting around and like watching tv or something like that i'm always like moving towards something is like i want to which i know being still is something i need to work more on and then something else that i my last one which i also think is good is like i really try to bring myself back to the present moment and so something i repeat in my head is like am i being present right now like i'll be like working on something and i'm like wait can i do this later can, can I be present right now in this situation? So I try not to be on my phone when I'm with other people. And it's like, I want to give someone my attention. So like, if I have to be on my phone, like responding to somebody or doing something, I always like really apologize. It's like, because I do want to give someone my attention and my presence. I think it's really, again, this is all kind of looping together in a very, um, very space. But those were the things that I thought about. I'm gonna write down the next question if you're at any time you're still working on something you can always pause this by the way i should have said that earlier what voices take up the most space in my head this can be an internalized voice from a person or a deep part of yourself so what voices take up the most space in my head i would definitely say for me myself um the people around me and that's ever changing like so again whoever's perceiving me and would definitely say that um, my mother and probably my partner are two frequent people I think of. And um, unfortunately, also some negative people from my past that are no longer in my life. I still get caught something that in the perception range is I've had people that I've considered friends over time who would make comments about again how they're perceiving me and they those things like that stick it's like the way I stand or walk or talk or like something like that is like someone makes a comment on what I'm wearing or how I'm acting and it, it will stick with me for a really long time like some of these people are from like high school junior high so <laughs> my brain remembers 
I am the elephant. Um, but the next question, what does the voice of truth sound like to me? How does it feel in my body? So let's do first, what does the voice of truth sound like to me? I want you to write yours first, but I will tell you mine in a second. And the second one was, how does it feel in my body? And honestly, I wrote a few words that would kind of double there. I, how does the voice of truth sound to me? Calm, not judgmental, grounded, unbiased. Um, how does it feel in my body? Peaceful. So when something feels truthful, it's not that it's like, it can't be something that would upset me because the truth is not always an easy thing to hear, but it's not wired in anxious and it's not pulling me and wrapping me up in it. It feels more like even in the hard moments, I'm like, this person's not for me. It's never like in a panic feeling. It's never when I'm just all worked up. It's just like this situation isn't good for me. It's like, I know this. It's like always like, I always feel like the calm realization of it. And again, not that it's not hurtful and not that it's not upsetting or that it wouldn't cause anxiety, but it's never when I'm like trying to push things together, make them work. And last two questions, they're, again, they're together. How can I practice listening to myself without expectation? And how can I make space for my inner truth to speak? So first, how can I practice listening to myself without expectation? And then how can I make space for my inner truth to speak? trying to think of the word. <laughs> There's a word in my head. I'm not, um, it's not confirmation, but validation. So I put, how can I practice listening to myself without expectations, starting small, like what I'm wearing, what I'm eating, what I'm even posting on here. How can I make space for my inner truth to speak, not looking for as much validation and opinions from others? So that's it, my guys. And journaling doesn't have to look like some wild aesthetic and 
deep experience sometimes it can be just like a simple like chit chat kind of questions and sometimes that will take you deeper but it doesn't always have to i used to think that to journal i needed to have these grand insightful thoughts that like <laughs> again if it like if it wasn't <laughs> If it wasn't important enough of a realization, then like it wasn't working. But sometimes I just ramble in my journals and I would love to hear how your experience went, but I felt really good about that. I think that I have some things that I want to keep my eye on, keep my attention on. And that was really what I wanted to do is find what energy that I wanted to focus on and I think listening to myself and less to others, listening to what my truth is and not what I think it should be or what I want people to perceive it as and really just be myself and do the things that I want to do. <laughs> and being here with you guys is one of those things I do frequently have those moments though before I record or after I record or before I post it's like does anyone want to see this and I think more importantly is do I want to share this and if there's somebody there who wants to see it then I'm so happy and I'm so grateful for the community of people that I have but I need to not be so concerned because nine times out of ten I get like an overwhelmingly kind response from like my circle of people who I'm posting for so the people who want to be here seem to want to be here I guess <laughs> uh, listening listening people and um, one last peek on how beautiful this is then I will show you again this is from the Energy Archaeology Oracle, if I didn't show you before. But we will probably do, let's think, which deck would probably be next? I have quite a few decks that have like things that we could do kind of journaly wise together. Might do like the Death Doula next and intentionally pick out one of the things that we can work through together and instead of just like pulling a card at random maybe I can like set up a kind of little exercise out of here because this one has like there's either like alter things you can do and so it doesn't always have to be journaling I guess we can do like maybe we could do like an altar set up together um, some just like things to kind of so we can practice together even though we are far. So thank you for being here. I love you and I will see you again soon. <laughs>